Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we're going to discuss urban data, its different types, and most importantly, how it can be used to influence the cities in which people are increasingly choosing to live. So let's take it back to the very beginning of the year, literally our second lecture of the year, when we talked about geographic data. We talked about quantitative and qualitative data. And tonight we're going to examine how governments and businesses analyze changes in these types of data to inform and influence policies and decision making. By examining both, individuals and organizations can benefit by examining topics with both breadth and depth, which can provide a more complete picture of what is happening in a city. So let's review what each of these types of data are. Quantitative data is data that can be measured, counted, and expressed with numbers. It's about the quantity of the data. So topics like age or gender ratios are quantitative data. Researchers might utilize test results, questionnaires, and data from existing sources like the United States Census Bureau. Within the United States, the Census Bureau is probably the most robust source of quantitative data that municipalities use. And it collects more than just demographic data. It also examines economics, transportation, workforce data, and household information. Qualitative data, on the other hand, is descriptive and conceptual, often relying on individual narratives and observations. If you recall from unit number one, we said that quantitative data is associated with numbers, while qualitative data is associated with the five senses, data that can be seen, smelled, tasted, touched, and heard. So field studies, interviews, and focus groups are all examples of sources of qualitative data. Researchers might ask how you feel about a professional sports stadium being built in our community, or whether you support a policy proposal by the state government. And geographers will also document their own observations as part of qualitative research. So what I'm going to attempt to do is connect every standard in Unit 6, our Cities and Urban Land Use Unit, including the ones we haven't specifically lectured on yet, back to data that might inform decision makers and residents. That data might be quantitative or qualitative or may include examples of both. Hopefully, this will provide some context and will make it easier for us to understand how urban data is used and why it's so important. In our historical approach to cities, we examine the population growth of cities, a quantitative characteristic. But through primary and secondary sources, we have qualitative accounts of how different life was in small agricultural villages when compared to large urban agglomerations. Mega and meta cities are obviously factors that can be counted, as well as the population change in a particular area. World cities are evaluated by their influence. So categorizing and ranking them is more of a qualitative approach. Central place theory is a qualitative model that is based on quantitative data, like how far are people willing to travel and how many people are needed to support a business. All urban models are qualitative in nature because they're based on observations of urban land use. But the cost of the land being high at the center of the model is a quantitative metric. The descriptions of different types of housing has a strong correlation with population density, again showing how both qualitative and quantitative data are necessary to understand these topics. 
Municipalities use census data to plan infrastructure improvements or determine where and how federal funds are spent on schools, hospital, roads, or public works projects. Urban sustainability is focused on reducing pollution, which may be examined by looking at air quality statistics and then discussing urban improvements like bicycle paths with residents who may be interested in utilizing them. Other interviews may reveal the impact of discriminatory housing practices that still have an impact on contemporary urban situations. So hopefully, these gave you a taste of how quantitative and qualitative data can be used by individuals, policymakers, and businesses to influence cities and how people interact there. Have a great night, everyone. I'll see you back in class.